Gas it from there. Let's see, Indian. That's working, take down. Just drive it. Welcome to Toys Episode 4. This is Brett's Pajero. You'll meet Brett shortly. We haven't had a Pajero yet. We haven't had very much yet. Anyway, Brett's the owner. He's going to come and tell us about it. Where are you, Bretto? Morning, Stephen. Morning, Brett. <coughs> tell us about your car. Start with the front end. Uh, all right, this is a, a Pajero. Um, it's a 2009 NT model, uh, which is a 3.2 litre common rail diesel. Um, I suppose we'll start at the front, too. Yep, yep. Right that. Um, front right. end protection, lighting. Um, as you've probably seen, I don't know whether you've seen on my channel, but uh, this is the bull bar that we just put on uh, with Steve's help. Uh, that went on a few weeks ago, uh, which is the ARB commercial bar, um, which was a little bit of a challenge to get on because uh, we DIY'd it, uh, ordered, ordered it from out of town, uh, four wheel drive over at Barnsley, and they were really good getting it to me. Um, and we tucked that on a weekend, and I recommend taking a few days to do that. But with Steve's help, uh, we managed to get it on, no problems. Uh, stuck in that, I've got a Runva winch, which is the uh, 11 XP Premium. Uh, there's a few different reasons I went with that over the 11 XP Standard, uh, and one of the main reasons was that it uh, comes with a low profile clutch, uh, which meant that I didn't have to go and buy an additional low profile clutch handle uh, to actually fit it into the bar. Uh, so that was handy. Uh, for anybody looking to put a Runva winch in the ARB bar for the Pajero, um, you do need to get the offset hauls as well, because um, you can't just use the one that uh, comes with it, otherwise it rubs on the back of the bull bar there. Cool. What kind of lights you got? Uh, mate, this is just a eBay. Um, don't ask me the wattage or anything like that, but this was from Sunyi uh, up there in Queensland. Uh, these are just a little set of seven inch Narvas, they're just uh, halogen. Um, the, they do all you all, need? These have all come off previous yeah. vehicles. Uh, so they throw a little, obviously they throw a bit further than the LED bar. Um, and the reason I chose that LED bar was because it's got the wider spread uh, of the models that he had. Cool. I think it's about a 22 inch, and I think it throws about 170 wide, uh, which is real good for the uh, off-roading and country driving and all that sort of stuff and, and dodging the skippies. Okay, I see you've got some shackles and some bash plates. Uh, what do you got there? I do. Uh, the bash plates are all booze bash plates, uh, which, you know, if you're on the Pajero forums, uh, they're, they're a bit of a, you know, they support the forums and stuff like that, uh, and they're pretty good. Uh, and they that's a full set. Uh, that's basically from front to back, so it goes all the way from the uh, cooler here at the front, uh, the intercooler, which you'll see at the front, which is front one protects, goes all the way through to the back of the transfer case. Uh, and then I've also got the fuel tank guard as well. Uh, and then on the rear of the vehicle, uh, there's the rear bash plate as well. Uh, the shackles that you see in there, mate, are only just attached to the standard tie downs. For now? Uh, which. For, for most vehicles, they'll say, don't use your standard tie down. Uh, but again, going kind of with information that was available on the Pajero forum. Uh, and there's a video on YouTube 
where they're actually testing out the standard tie downs and Mitsubishi suggests that they're okay for recovery. Uh, we still use a bridle to, rather than just pulling off the one side, uh, like an equaliser strap. Uh, so if you use that, you should be fine. Yeah, it makes uh, sense. But I'll be avoiding those uh, if I can. I'm going with a winch instead, but it, you know, it gives me enough confidence to use it if I have to. As you do. All right, and what have you got done to the side of it, Bruno? Uh, okay. Um, standard 18 inch rims, which I've, I've given con consideration to uh, going to the 17s. Uh, the problem with the Pajeros, and I think it's uh, NT onwards, sort of around about the 2009, 2010, etc. Uh, the front calipers on the brakes are really large. Yep. Uh, so you can't, you have a lot of difficulty getting uh, a wheel or a rim that'll actually fit and go around the, the calipers. Uh, so for that, I've stuck with the 18s. Uh, when I was looking at going with the 18 inch tires and was speaking to a few tire dealers, uh, one of the guys basically said, mate, for what you're gonna pay for the 18 inch tires, I can get you a set of 17 inch rims and tires for about the same price. Uh, but then these uh, hand cooks come up for a um, four for three price. Um, so I, I picked up those. Um, they're a Dynapro ATM, uh, and they are, so they're an 18 inch, so they're a 27565. So um, they're basically a 33. Uh, it did require some modification uh, to the front up here. Um, I had to sort of bash this back a little bit. There is a little bracket, I'm not sure if Steve can get in there and see there. Uh, I'll try. And when the original uh, bumper was on before we uh, took it off for the bull bar. Uh, I had to bend out some of the some of the metal supports there as well But obviously the bull bar gives me complete clearance now, which is good um, But just with those real small modifications, I was able to fit the 33s in there uh, And it was pretty straightforward. I had to take off the front uh, There were little mud guards there at the front that had to come off as well. I can see a blue coil in there What's it? You certainly you know what they are? are? Them are Lovell coils. Lovells. Um, I got those. So I've got Bilstein uh, shocks, uh, so they're a coil over front and back, IFS, so uh, they are the heavy duties. Uh, they come from the same place uh, as the side steps that I've got on, that's uh, Bushkins down Central Coast uh, here in New South Wales. Again, uh, they support the sort of the, you know, Pajero Forum, they've been really good. Uh, they actually uh, met me somewhere and dropped off the side steps, saved me having to drive down and get them. We've uh, got to be happy with that. Yeah, look, I was, I was looking to go away and, and uh, go and have a bit of a play with them and uh, was talking to them about how quickly they could get them to me. And they said, look, we'll meet you somewhere. And uh, they dropped them off and I had them, had them fit up within a few days. So that was brilliant. Yeah, something you're not going to get from the big guys, basically. So, uh, so, yeah, so they supplied the suspension. Uh, Kieran there was really good. Uh, I spoke to him about what I was going to do because I've got the bull bar on the front, spare battery in the back, yeah, auxiliary battery in the back, uh, fridge. I'm got a bit of a camper build which is not in there for this weekend because uh, I've got the caravan uh, so there is a lot of extra weight plus all the bash plates so I had to go with heavy duty stuff uh, and I don't regret it at all it was a good decision I think no it works well I've got two inch heavy levels on the land cruise and it worked really well yeah absolutely oh and obviously yeah two inch lift uh, yeah. in there as well which obviously I've lost a little bit of that with with all the extra weight that I've put on you got a fox wing up there? I certainly do. Uh, it's a fox wing, you know, the 270, uh, the Oz tent, Oz tent slash Rhino rack, uh, which is brilliant. I picked it up second hand, but all but brand new. And uh, I've got it. Look, it's going to be a hard thing to pick, but that's got to be one of the best things I've, I've bought on the four-wheel drive. I think it's absolutely brilliant. I'll bet. I'll put a link on Brett's channel. You can see it open later on if you haven't seen a fox wing before. Brett and I are going to do a comparo between his awning and my awning, which will be on his channel, so I'll let you all know where, where that is. What have you got around the back, Brett? Anything special? Uh, mate, not really. Um, I do have a reversing camera that I've thrown on there. Um, I'm going to get another one that there's the, the light here for the number plate, and you can actually get one that mounts up here, so I will swap that out because a few people have mentioned that the... Uh, the police might not like that because it does obscure the number plate a little bit. Uh, it has to be a picky cop. It would have to be very picky, but you know, sometimes they can they be. can be, yeah, true. <laughs> um, this was just uh, an attempted mount for an HF antenna in an amateur radio operator, the same as Stephen here. 
Um, this is just for sort of a HF whip, but as you can see, the vibrates a little bit. It's a bit floppy. Um, so I do have a new antenna that I've got at home that'll be going on probably on the front, so that'll probably come off, or I might use it for a, for a VHF UHF mount. Um, these are just a couple again, just from Sunyi, uh, cheap 30 watt, uh, well they six LED little light bars they call them, uh, work lights. So they're actually attached to my reversing lights because the reversing lights on this is not much chop. Uh, and if I've got to reverse up to the caravan or something in the dark, or even just down the driveway, uh, they, they weren't very good. So I've, I've added those on, and that's just your standard, standard, Anderson standard, plug standard uh, and recovery shackle. hitch. Um, yep. Yeah, that Anderson plug, which is absolutely filthy at the moment, just, right um, just comes off an auxiliary battery. Uh, and actually, while you're there, I'll, I'll show you this, Stephen. Oh. What a great idea, Brett. I'm oh, very impressed with this. I'll well, miss all the bed section this week. Yep, all the beds out, mate. I didn't want to be carrying around the extra weight. You might get some stools um, of that to put on later on, eh? Yeah, mate, no worries. Um, what I want to show you Check is, um, on Tim's over there, uh, he has his... I'm not sure if you know, with these compressors, um, basically uh, the air hose has the, the pressure gauge uh, oh, yep, in yep. line. Uh, and you can't get a, an accurate measure uh, of the pressure um, while these are running. So because the switch is actually on the compressor, you're running backwards and forwards, turning it off, going back, reading the gauge, going yep. back, turning it on. Um, so I'll show you what I've done for that in a sec. Uh, but this is, okay, if you've not seen in the back of a Reproduro, this is where the third row seat normally folds down into. Uh, if you've got a third row seat, it'll fold down in here and stay in here. And then when you want to use it, you take this out, fold it up, and then you've got your third row. So it's out of the way. But um, as you can see, all the rear seats got pulled out. Uh, and this is from a spare battery. Uh, this is where I'm going to hard mount the compressor. And it's great for, you know, storage of other stuff like, you know, dog food and recovery gear and, and tools and stuff like that. But when the bed goes back in, the majority of that will come out and go into the bed. Oh, yep. uh, and this will be mainly electronics and stuff that I don't need to access. And how do you charge long. that battery, Brett? Uh, mate, just there on the left, uh, there's my projected DC-DC charger. Uh, so that's taking from the alternator, so that'll charge up while we're driving around. And I've got to say, that's probably the neatest install I've ever done of everything. <laughs> anything. So I'm very happy with that. Uh, and it also takes a solar input. I'm not sure if Steve can climb up the top there, but there's a... We'll get to that. Right, there's a 120 watt solar panel on the top. Uh, when I get back and I get more time and, and buy some more cable, I'm actually going to throw the other 120 on top. So I'll have uh, 240 up there on the top to run the battery. But that runs the fridge, which is in, in the middle. It doesn't normally sit there, but it does for this weekend. What have you got hanging up here? There's some kind of storage. <laughs> Mate, yeah. Um, I don't think I've seen that before. Uh, not? Okay, that's a bit of a bone of contention with some people on the forum. In that these are currently my, these are my poles uh, from the Foxwing awning. Just so I can get them out of the way. Because I don't have the rear seats in, I've just grabbed some of these aluminium tracks that you get from Bunnings. Uh, the Grunt brand. I think they're about 20 bucks a set or something. And I will be doing the same on the other side. I haven't done it yet. Because I don't need the grab rails in the back. Because there's nobody sitting in the back. Uh, so I just went up with my storage it just mainly i should throw soft stuff up there just to get it off the floor and uh, it's out of the way so when i've got the the sleeper built in here it just gives me a little bit of extra place to put stuff but because these are my tent poles everybody was concerned that if i brake hard and they're pretty much behind the driver's seat uh they're going to go through the back of my head because i did just have them tied up there with bungee straps <laughs> Uh, so as you can see, I've gone with the little ratchet strap type oh. things here now, mate, and they're, and that's, that's Not gonna solid, go anywhere, so I'm happy yeah. with that, yeah. Uh, but I will put some on the other side as well. Um, but I, I think I'll also get a, a pole holder for the yep. other side of the rack, so they're out, and, but always with me when I'm travelling around. What do you got on this groovy switch panel here? Um, mate, that's just a recent addition that I threw in before this weekend. Uh, it's a work in progress, that. So that's obviously just got... Uh, that's got some USB plugs, and that's just a 12 volt cigarette lighter socket, and then obviously the uh, the voltage for the for the fridge. And as you can see, that's, that's in it. I think that's 13.8 or something. That's yeah, pretty good. Uh, and that's just off a solar panel, so it's what's well, now nearly 11 o'clock, uh, and that battery's rolling truly topped up just from the solar panel. That fridge mate runs 24/7. Awesome. Um, all right, the piece de resistance, Stephen. Oh, here we go. Um, 
I knew Brett had some special stuff in this truck. Um, People think it's just an ordinary Pajero. So, um, as per Tim's and as I was saying earlier, um, the challenge with these compressors is that you can't read the gauge uh, while the compressor is going. And that means yep. you've got to go backwards and forwards to the tyre, to the compressor, turn it off, go back and read it. So, uh, based on something that Tim's got in his car, uh, and I will do this eventually, has a remote control wired into it. Uh, get the dogs. <laughs> um, of course, I didn't have time to pull all the panels back out and um, wire up the remote. What I did was built this little box. Um, so what's in here is a receiver for the remote control here. Yep. Uh, and then you can see just two Anderson plugs. So effectively what I can do is plug this into my Anderson socket here if we're gonna get contact because it's filthy. Plug literally anything I want. Um, in this instance, there's gonna be the compressor here uh, into this side, like that. And then make sure that's on. Um, and then that's on the remote, basically. So I can have, <laughs> just doing laps. Um, so I can have, be at the tire with the gauge, uh, be pumping it up when I want to read the read the pressure on it. Uh, just hit the button, turn it off, uh, and then you know, read the pressure. And then when I want to go again, the button, and we're golden. How good is that? Um, so that's yeah, real real handy. That is a really um, neat trick. That I don't think I've ever seen something like that before. I will hardwire it eventually. I'll get another one because um, this one actually does four. That has four relays in it. Um, but with that. Um, the actual remote control itself just has four little relays in it uh, and four switches. Uh, you can see that there. Um, now those little switches that are in the nice. the remote control, uh, eBay, thirteen eBay. bucks. Um, Too easy. They're only rated for ten amps. Uh, so in this box, uh, in addition, Do you have a relay uh, or something. I've also got a sixty amp relay. Nice. Because uh, I think these pull about 40, 40, 40 yeah, I think so. Yeah, about that. Like yeah. That. Um, and you can see it's heavy. Heavy, wide, heavy duty wide and Looks stuff like, like that. Uh, it is thereabouts, I think. Yeah. Um, and that's just the uh, antenna cool. uh, for the remote control. So I can literally plug that into anybody. You know, I could take that over to Steve's car with an Anderson plug, plug that in and, you know, remote control, whatever nice. we wanted to. So, nice. Uh, handy. What's your gear hanging on the back door here? Um, I can see a first aid kit. What else you got? can see a first aid kit, mate. Um, one of those is, hang on. One of those is uh, just toilet paper. Always got to have loo roll uh, handy for when you're out camping. Uh, that one's a, I think this is an emergency straw. Oh, one of those life straws type of thing. Uh, I'm just trying to have a look. Oh, sorry, that's me um, Sawyer squeeze. So it's basically just a water filter. Oh, okay. Um, always keep it in the back. Um, I do have a one of those life straws in there floating around somewhere as well. Um, it's got more toys to be. Ladies and gentlemen. Well, uh, a lot of this has come from sort of backpack camping and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, you buy all the lightweight stuff and you just have it so you can, um, you know, take it with you just in case of emergency. And it, now it just stays in the car. Um, this uh, eBay bag, I think this was about 10 bucks. Um, the, the quality is okay. The zips are a bit dubious though. Um, just a knife. This is all first aid stuff. Uh, more first aid, um, you know. A nice soft bag, though. So yeah. Easy to handle. Um, Doesn't scuff up anything. And I, and I always think like, have I, you know, if I have to abandon the vehicle, um, you know, if it breaks down in the middle of nowhere or something like that. Uh, so I've got this toilet paper. I've got a small first aid kit. I've got the ability to take on water uh, if I need to. Uh, has a uh, just a hand saw. Uh, some towels, uh, a little knife, um, which is a, I don't remember what that was, um, uh, BK2, uh, and on that, so I've got some tinder, fire starting, uh, the ability to sharpen, uh, there's a, uh, what do you call it, mirror for, signaling mirror in there as well, um, again this is off everybody's website, there's my straw, uh, there's a, you know, 
uh, emergency blankets and, and all sorts of stuff in there, a little torch. So basically, if I had to abandon the vehicle, I could pretty much just take those bags. Like a grab bag. Uh, make yeah. them walk yeah. and, you know, I'm okay. Uh, there's no food or anything in it. Brett Grills, um, we're going to call him. Yeah, exactly. Brett Grills. Uh, something handy here on the Pajeros. This is going to get converted to a... Um, uh, to a table, uh, oh, yeah, drop on, down top yeah, yeah. on, on the back. Uh, but for now, that's just the hose for the compressor, right. some jumper cables, and stuff. You change like that. that, make that lid into a table area. Your gear will still live there, and you get the yeah, table. Yeah, yeah, can still live in the back. And as you can see, it's a bit of a pain in the freckle to um, get it all compressed back in there. And these things have a habit of opening Poppy themselves open, when you yeah. drive. So with that bag hanging on the back, it holds it all in. Cool. Um, yeah. Okay, we're at the inside of Brett's car. Brett's on the passenger side for some reason. If you're wondering why we've got all the dust, everybody, we're camping this weekend at Bylong Four Drive Park, and they haven't had rain here for about five years, and the whole place is just dusty. But, uh, yeah, just, you know, it's all part of the fun. <laughs> it is everywhere. Right, so what have you got done in here, mate? Uh, mate, not a great deal of stuff, to be honest. Um, this was in the car when I got it. Uh, I bought the car second hand uh, with about mm, 180,000 on it. That's around about 200,000, or knock it on close enough now. Uh, it's just an Eclipse radio, which is actually not bad for a 10 year old unit. Um, it has Bluetooth, GPS, all that sort of stuff on it. The problem is they want about 200 bucks to update the maps on the on the uh, yeah, GPS. Yeah. So that's not going to happen. So I've, over in that corner, a lot of this stuff is in here just for this weekend. So you'll see the uh, handheld GPS that Steve's looking at now, I think. Yep. Uh, that's the Garmin 62. So that allows me to do um, tracking where we've been and and a bit of mapping. Uh, the one in the bottom right hand corner is just a Nuvi for street type stuff there as well. Uh, if it comes up the top here mate, there's a just a, a dash cam uh, via FO. Um, they do a 4K video, which is awesome mm -hmm. for having there, gets good quality. Uh, and when I'm driving along and towing the caravan, I tend to have the tablet up here. Uh, and what I would normally run, which you won't see now because it's not uh, cars not running is um, I'll have my if it works um, okay it's not doing anything there at the moment but uh, I normally have my talk app going uh, which monitors my transmission temps um, you know fuel economies uh, load and all that sort of stuff because I like cool. to keep an eye on the transmission temps while I'm towing the caravan um, this is just a VHF UHF uh, ICOM radio from an amateur radio um, that's going to get moved soon uh, and either go to this spot just here um, or um, if you want to pan up there or I've seen people mount them up in here yeah, I've seen um, that, yeah. so it might go up in there because uh, the, for my HF setup uh, is going to go here going to need the additional space and this is really small uh, you can see that can go pretty much anywhere um, so that'll that'll get shifted uh, just a comm speaker over here uh, which is just a, uh, I don't know, it says Access brand, it was about 20 bucks or something, got that from the uh, field day at Wyong. Uh, what I really like about this is that there's a, a little metal plate that you get that you, you drill on, uh, or screw to whatever it is, and then that's actually magnetic. Oh, cool. uh, so when, if I've got somebody in the passenger seat, I can drop that out of the way, uh, but when they're not there, I just mount that back on. Typically stays there for all but the roughest of tracks. Like yesterday. Like yesterday, it fell off a couple of times. Um, I'm a bit of a fan of magnets, so you'll see that this is the microphone rather than having the hook. It's just a magnet there as well, which I've just super glued yeah. to the dash, uh, really? which is awesome because when you're forward driving, um, rather than having to, this was just a earth magnet off eBay, you know, half a dozen or something for a few bucks. Uh, so rather than having to find the hook, if I'm just in that general area, it just Hooks catches up. it, uh, which is absolutely brilliant. Uh, brake controller under the bottom, um, uh, Tacontia, uh P3 or something that is. Uh, so it's obviously a smart controller, so um, that's for the manual control there. Uh, the there's stuff, there's yeah. boost and yeah, all that sort of stuff there. But um, beyond that, mate, uh, this is pretty much just it? the way it is in the front. Well, anybody who wants to see what the other stuff that Brett does, we can have a look on Brett's channel, which I'll put the links to in the description box below. Oh, yeah. So you can check out the other stuff. He does a lot of do-it-yourself videos of how we've, how he's bolted things on and some of the other mods. And so far, nothing's fallen off. It's going well so far. It's good. <laughs> so we'll have, a, we'll have a look at the engine bay. We'll have a look on the roof and uh, 
Should I pretty right. well wrap it up? That's on your side, mate. Uh, um, other than the mess, that's a little bit of the battery with all the wires sort of coming off it. Um, there is a plan to get a, a new fuse block and um, mount it over here. Going to go with some a &L fuses rather than the standard ones. Um, over the back, just the two relays for all the lights on the front. I'm trying to keep this as tight as I can, but I'm, I'm starting to lose control with this, uh, with everything going in. Easy to get out of control. Uh, very quickly, mate. Um, I made the mistake of running um, some RG213 through for the VHF UHF, um, and that kind of gets in the way a little bit. This is the isolation switch for the winch at the front. Uh, this comes as part of the package. Uh, so I usually have that switch off and that key out, and that sits in the just in the glove box. Um, there is a nice sizable fuse over the back there, which is for the stereo, for the amplifier, uh, but that'll go into the fuse box as well. Um, I basically just want one feed line off here going to a fuse distribution yeah. block and everything running off that, just to make it that much tidier. Is everything else standard around the rest of the bay? It is, mate. Um, eventually I'll, I'll have another, I've only got the one fuel filter here, which is the standard one. Um, so I know the importance of putting a second one, especially if we're going to start doing a bit more remote travel. Um, Star Traveller will mate, you'll need one. Yeah, we'll need to get another one in there. So that's why I want to get all this sort of tidied up here so I've got room to fit another one in, or bet that it might go on that side. Uh, over this side. Oh, this, what have we got here? Diff breathers? Uh, oh, sorry, yeah, I did put the diff breathers on the other week. Um, so they just do the, literally just the diffs. Uh, no, no transfer case, uh, no transmission. Uh, again, Pajero Forum sort of, there's a bit of an argument going on, but consensus seems to be that the transfer case and the tra transmission breathers actually go up into the cabin, uh, up into basically where your gear shift is yep. for the auto. So I've, I've only done the two discs. Uh, and this here is just a, a mod uh, which is for the EGR. Um, so it shuts off the EGR. Um, so obviously, you know, to, to stop it all coking up and stuff like that. Cool. So uh, literally that's just a plug and play uh, harness. You, you unplug it uh, off the air filter here, uh, plug that in line and uh, no more EGR. So rather than going with the blanking plate, which some people have had some issues with, uh, and then obviously if I have any issues, because it's only just a plug and play, literally just plug it in line, uh, if I need to take it for a rego check or something, so and they take don't the like it. and they can. Uh, we don't know anything about this. Yep, yep. They don't want to touch it, you know, because I've done modifications that can be pulled out of line. Awesome. I go back in, and nobody's done the wires. That's all you do. Absolutely. We haven't got much more to go, mate. What, what do you got going on up on the roofy? Uh, mate, other than that was just a rack that I uh, took off the old Velika that I had. Um, just a standard aluminium rack. Uh, nothing too special, but I do like it because it's nice and light. Uh, but it's still fairly solid. These are just your standard uh, I don't know, roof racks for your Pajero Pro Rack or something like that. 120 watt solar panel uh, there, which runs the <laughs> runs the um, the battery in the fridge 24/7, so it literally runs all the time. And these treads or treadle lights or whatever you want to call them tracks, these are actually the Aldi brand ones. Oh yeah. Uh, which are yet to be tested. So I think we need to maybe find somewhere to get them a test. And we'll get on the beach uh, and give them a test. Sounds so, like a plan. Um, yeah, untested. So there's a bunch of equipment that I've put on in a rush uh, to come wipe the bowl on that's still a little bit untested. Uh, I've tested the back plate, the uh, side steps, the, the rear plate. Um, I haven't tested these treads or the winch yet. So hopefully when we get it today, mate, we can cool. suck into that and we'll see how they work. Plenty uh, of time. But frankly, I'm expecting them to probably break. You never know. Uh, and obviously, oh, a couple of antennas on the front. Uh, one's just the VHF UHF, the, the 808 in the car. Got the short ones on for the. Yeah, yeah. Not built the, the trees. The range. Um, and the other one is I've, I've also got a digital scanner in the car as well that I run. Uh, so that runs off that there as well. Nice. Uh, you know, listen to the emergency services and all that sort of As you do. Whatever. Yeah, as you do. It's uh, a nice good time. Um, the only other thing that I didn't touch on, mate, that's in the back there, uh, which you can see probably under that window. Your insulation? Uh, insulation, I've got a full set of those uh, through to here, and they're, uh, I think they're just called solar screens, an Australian mob. Yep. And I've got to tell you, when I've got that full set in, uh, probably makes about five degrees difference uh, in the car. Significant okay. difference. Cool. I haven't worried this weekend because it's reasonably cool and the car's going to be moving, but if I was camped up, I'd have that full set in for the fridge and it just helps that fridge run that much awesome. better. So, yeah.
So if I had to put it to you, mate, what do you reckon uh, your, your very favourite mod would be out of what you've done so far? Uh, the one. The one. Well, I love having a fridge in the car. Absolutely love it. Um, I'm not much of a drinker, but I love having a cold can of Pepsi or something in the back. Uh, and just, you know, when you go camping, we're just not having to take ice and eskies and, and all that sort of stuff. You know, even just when you're not off-roading uh, and you just go and do the shopping, you can throw all your, you know, your cold stuff in there and, yep. and keep going. You don't need to worry about yep. it. The fridge is, I reckon, yeah, absolutely brilliant. But that comes with a battery, and then with the battery comes a charge controller and, and so on. So it's not just a case of trying to... I love my fridge. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, if, you, if somebody wants looking at a Pajero, because they're really not often thought of as off-road vehicles, what are the pitfalls? What do they need to look out for, you think? And well, what are the good points? Hard to say at this point. Um, Just what you've done so far. Yeah, look, um, I haven't managed to break anything yet, so I don't know if there's anything in particular to look for. Uh, I think same as anything. Anything diesel-wise, uh, look for service, you know, scheduled services and all that sort of stuff, make sure it's been looked after. Oh, one thing with the Pajeros, um, especially around this model, um, you definitely want to check uh, your sills. Just pull your rubbers back when you get them, uh, because these are notorious for rusting out through here. All right, yep. uh, it was a warranty job uh, if it was picked up during a warranty period, uh, but make sure that you check all the sills uh, around here, specifically on the rear doors, because uh, they've got a habit of, of just rusting out. Um, so I've also got an electronic rust controller on this as well. Nice. Uh, which I didn't mention, it's buried down the back. Uh, so I think I've been pretty lucky there. Um, as far as capabilities for wheel drive, um, I've been pretty impressed with it so far. And hopefully um, Steve throws in a few clips there. Uh, it's done real well this weekend. Uh, traction control on the Pajeros is awesome. Uh, so I've got that. Oh, we didn't talk about that. But I've got the traction control. Um, and this has also got the rear diff lock, this model. Um, but as standard, when you turn the rear diff lock on, uh, it actually disengages your traction control from the front, um, which makes it, you know, you're losing any power from the front. Uh, so what you can actually do is buy a mod, which is a harness, just a plug-in harness. Uh, you've got to pull the dash apart to do it, uh, but it will allow me to switch on the traction control at the front wheels whilst the diff lock is on. Uh, the mod also allows me to turn all traction control off all together. So if I'm going and doing a beach run or something like that, um, rather than having the traction control intervening and, and locking locking wheels up, I can switch it all off all together. So that was a mod that I've done. Uh, there's a few extra switches in the dash, but um, yeah, that's about it. And I can tell you from having watched this thing playing yesterday, it's surprising. With the 200 goes where you'd expect it to go, the Pajero followed me. There's plenty of trucks you'd expect would make it that didn't. But the Gero, yeah, I can dead right. set say, has not missed the beat following the 200 around. Not yet. We're, <laughs> we're going to put it through its paces today. We yeah. will find out, but a uh, surprisingly little, great little truck. Really capable. Yeah, it has been really good. And, um, they're not the kind of thing most people think of as a tourer, but as you can see, this one's well and truly on the way to being a good touring truck, and it does what Brett wants. Yep, so far so good, uh, and great on road as well, like they're really comfortable, um, obviously adding all this crap on, fuel economy's kind of picked up a little bit, I've gone from probably around town from about 11 up to about 13 and a half, so I think all the mods and all the extra weights cost me one and a half, two litres, a hundred. Small price to pay though. Yeah, absolutely. Let's face it, we don't buy them for fuel economy, we buy them for purpose. Absolutely, and it's, uh, yeah, it's doing its job so far. All right, Brett, I reckon that wraps it, mate. It's, uh, thanks very much for showing us around your truck, and uh, we'll get some shots of it wheeling around later on. Too easy. Cheers. Cheers, mate. See you guys.